So I will start with the, with the first paper. The first paper, paper is titled A Loss of Function Splice Acceptor Variant in IGF2 is Protected for Type 3 Diabetes. This is a very large uh, effort and uh, from a very large consortium funded by the uh, SLIM Initiative for Genomic and Health. And it was, it was uh, conducted uh, at the, in Mexico in collaboration, it was conducted at the Broad Institute in collaboration with Mexico and uh, also in Massachusetts General Hospital. And also, um, show, uh, I was uh, a visitor from the Barcelona Square Computing Center when this project started, and I finished it now that I'm a staff scientist at the Broad Institute. Um, yeah, so I forgot to say, but I'm happy that you interrupt me if there's some things that I don't explain clearly, or if you have any questions. So the, the study, uh, this study was conducted with patients from Mexico. And one of the reasons why, why this was conducted in Mexico is because Mexico is one of the countries that has the highest prevalence of type 2 diabetes. And of course, uh, this is uh, mainly due to environmental, environmental effects, but also there are genetic differences in, in this population that could drive the highest prevalence of type 2 diabetes. So um, this study initially recruited around 9,000 individuals. And these 9,000 individuals were uh, ascertained with different uh, genotyping or sequencing technologies. And the first study included, uh, included the uh, GWAS data with a dense genotyping array of, uh, of about 2,000, 2 million markers plus imputation. There was a second study uh, where they did exome sequencing in uh, around 4,000 individuals. And then there was a third study where they did exome chip, which is a, which is a genotyping array, array focused to uh, identify coding rare variants in uh, almost 9,000 individuals. Um, the focus of this, I will focus this talk on this third study and uh, just showing that uh, this is a, a huge collaborative effort and these are the principal investigators below. Uh, which included several investigators from, from Mexico and, and from, from the US, including Jose Flores and David Alsler, uh, who uh, from, from the broad. So the main objective of this uh, talk was to identify coding genetic variants that had potential therapeutic implications for type 2 diabetes. And the motivation is that uh, we think that genetic studies in other populations, when, when, when I say different, I mean non-European population, can allow the identification of novel loci associated with type 2 diabetes. And some examples of that are the, the, the discovery that was performed in uh, Greenland, uh, where they identified a variant that had an odds ratio of 10, so that means increased the risk for type 2 diabetes tenfold. And this variant was common in Greenland population, but not in other populations. So this odd ratio of 10 is a huge odd ratio, uh, because uh, remember that we, here we're talking about complex disease, is type 2 diabetes. So usually when a GWAS is performed for this kind of diseases, the odd ratio are uh, usually something like 1.3, the maximum. So, so this is a huge effect size for a variant uh, related to a complex disease. So another example is this uh, study that was performed in, in African Americans where they identified a novel variant that had a frequency of 23% in African Americans but it's almost absent in the rest of the populations. And, and, and then going to the studies that were performed in Mexico, this, this is the first study that was performed in this consortium. And this was the GWAS analysis. And um, this analysis uh, identified a variant that had an odds ratio of 1.3 and had a frequency of 50%. Um, so, but, but it's almost absent in the rest of the populations. So the, this odds ratio of 1.3 is quite a high odds ratio and it, it explains a substantial fraction of the, difference, the uh, differences in prevalence in Mexico compared to other populations. And just for comparison, the most famous or the most uh, well-known variant for type 2 diabetes uh, in Europeans, which is this one located in TCS702, has a odds ratio of around 1.3. So this is the, probably the second uh, variant that is common and has a, a large odds ratio. 
so okay and then uh, there was this uh, other study published in JAMA uh, where there was identified a variant in HN of 1 alpha and this variant uh, was very low frequency in the Latino population but uh, individuals uh, carrying this variant had increased risk of type 2 diabetes uh, with an ratio of five uh, fold, which is also a huge dose ratio uh, when talking about uh, complex disease. So we conducted this study uh, using the exome chip genotyping array. Uh, in this slide, you can see the, the study design of the cases and controls. There were cases and controls for several cohorts and as I said, a total is like around 4,000 cases and 4,000 controls. Mm. So in this slide, you can see uh, the QQ plot uh, of uh, all the variants in Exxon chip. But what we wanted to check is we wanted to identify variants that are uh, common in Mexico, but, uh, but not, uh, not common in Europeans. So we think that these are the variants where we can find like novel Novel associations because because all the variants that are already common in Europeans uh, would have already been found by uh, much larger studies. So in next QQ plot, you, uh, we're just showing these variants, and we see that uh, here we have like two uh, variants that are highlighted, and it turns out that these two variants are uh, specifically one is the SLC sixteen A eleven, which is the variant that has already been uh, identified that was already published. And then the other one is uh, the one uh, located in IGF-2. Um, so this variant had a p-value of 10 to minus seven and was exome wide significant, but of course we attempted to replicate it. So the replication results can be seen here in figure C. <clears throat> and we see that we replicated in, uh, in the t 2 genes projects, in Pima uh, Native Americans, in another uh, cohort, and in also in the JERA cohort. So overall, this variant showed an odds ratio of 0 0.8 and p-value 10 to minus 14. So there was a robust association. <clears throat> so odds ratio uh, 0 0.8 means that this variant is protective for type 2 diabetes so that individuals carrying this variant that is only common, it's, on, it, it's only present in, uh, in Latin Americans, have a reduced risk uh, of 20% of for type 2 diabetes. And as you can see here, um, this variant is almost absent in the rest of the population, except, except, uh, except in East Asians, where the frequency is 1%, but in, in, in Latin Americans is 14%. Um, so we integrated all the data that, that we had available from exome sequencing plus imputation plus uh, GWAS data and the exome chip. And with that, we conducted a fine mapping to see what is the most likely uh, causal variant for these locus. And it turned out that this, this variant at the top, which was uh, the variant we identified uh, for the exome chip. And it turns out that this variant is a, a canonical splice acceptor. Uh, so it's located in a canonical splice acceptor size. So the canonical splice acceptor size that these variants that uh, so these two positions that are the two nucleotide positions that are uh, upstream the exon and downstream the exon. So in that case, it is predicted that if this uh, nucleotide uh, is changed, the this exon, the adjacent exon, will not be spliced in, and then will not be uh, able. Uh, this isoform will not be able to be formed. So IGF two, the most of IGF two that has been studied is all has been. Uh, yeah, isoform one, because isoform one is this uh, that I'm pointing now, uh, is, is, is the one that is expressed as higher frequency. But then there's another isoform, which is a minor, minor isoform that is expressed at very low levels, but it still is expressed around 2% and uh, depending on the tissue. So this isoform has additional uh, 56 amino acids. So it, it goes for a longer uh, protein sequence, which is shown here in red. So what happens here is that uh, individuals in Mexico that carry this variant have, can express isoform 1, but cannot express isoform 2. So this is what it was predicted according to uh, the splice set. Uh, but of course, this was a robust prediction that we needed to test uh, this. And 
oh well so, sorry this this uh, slide is showing the expression across all tissues and we can see that the high expression is in liver and, and in adipose tissue and also in uh, the right embryonic progenitors we see that it has higher expression in pancreatic islet progenitors and also high expression in uh, adult islet islets compared to other tissues um, Yes, so what we try to do is to confirm that actually this variant is disrupting the splice acceptor site. Um, and, and what we did is uh, we introduced this variant in vitro and what we see is that uh, introducing this variant does not disrupt the expression of the exon 3, which is major, the, the exon that it goes for both the major and the minor isoform, but the exon 1 and 2 junction uh, is almost absent when in the presence of the variant that is uh, protective. Um, and also on the right plot, you can see this is the digital droplet uh, PCR plot that shows that when there is this uh, allele, the allele A, there is no expression of this uh, uh, junction. <clears throat> so this is in vitro, but we also wanted to prove that in vivo. So for that, we had to collect samples uh, from, from Mexico of liver and adipose tissue <clears throat> and because well, so we couldn't use, for example, a resource such as GTEx because GTEx uh, is mainly based in European, so there are not in, there are no individuals that have these variants. So we, we collected all these uh, tissues, then uh, we genotyped them, and then we measured expression. And what we see is what we can see here in this uh, top slide is that when measuring isoform two, which is the the, the isoform that is disrupted per, uh, by the variant, we see that um, that the, the A allele is associated with less expression. So we can see that homozygous have less expression and heterozygous. So heterozygous have less and homozygous even less. And this is in liver, but we also see a similar thing in the adipose tissue, although the association is not so clear because the expression is lower. So in comparison, when we check uh, when we do another analysis that accounts for both isoform 1 and isoform 2, we see that, that there are no significant associations uh, across genotypes. <clears throat> so, so these two experiments confirm that actually the variant is disrupting the expression of this uh, exon. So we also wanted to see if the expression of this isoform is... Um, uh, so it's related with type diabetes, regardless, regardless of the genotype. So for that, we only analyze individuals that are uh, GG homozygous, which is the common allele. So, so it's the common genotype. So GG is the genotype that most Europeans have. Uh, so, so they can express, so the, the individuals carrying GG, they can express isoform too. But what we see is that individuals with type 2 diabetes have much higher expression of this isoform. And also, we see that in non-diabetics, uh, the uh, HbA1c, which is a marker for long-term uh, uh, glucose, like gly glycemia, is associated with, uh, so higher expression of this isoform is associated with higher expression of this uh, marker. So, so what, 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 it, what this is, so what is shown here is that, that it, it turns out that the, the expression of this isoform is associated with type 2 diabetes, and we see that the, this isoform is uh, more present in uh, diabetes. So all these results suggest that uh, probably reducing the isoform expression, isoform 2 expression in the relevant tissues could be a potential target for type 2 diabetes therapies. Um, however, uh, we don't know if this variant or reducing this isoform will protect for uh, type 2 diabetes, but maybe it could cause uh, other possible diseases. So what we did is uh, we analyzed individuals that have this variant and we analyzed association for other diseases in a phenome, uh, doing a phenome-wide association study. So the phenome-wide association studies here cannot be as huge as other phenome-wide that uh, we're used to see lately in UK by Bank or other uh, studies because we have to focus that on only uh, on only Hispanic or Latin American individuals. So, so these are the diseases that we had access for. So we see that this variant 
is associated with less risk of type 2 diabetes. Um, but, but analyzing the other, all, all, all the other diseases, we saw that this variant is not associated to increased risk of other diseases. Um, what is LDS? Uh, inflammatory bowel disease. So yeah, th this is some curiosity. So it seems that it's protective uh, for inflammatory bowel disease. Um, we didn't go further on that, but it's kind of interesting. Thing. But since it's protective, it didn't worry us too much. So, so in theory, this, this study is telling us that if we were able to make a drug that, that it inhibits this uh, isoform, uh, according, according to this data, at least with the data we have, there's nothing that tells us that uh, this could be causing other diseases. And the same, the, we did the same analysis comparing homozygous of the protective variant with the homozygous of the risk variant, and we see the same trend. So individuals that are homozygous for uh, the protective variant have much lower risk for type 2 diabetes. Um, but they don't have uh, increased risk for any other uh, possible uh, disease. And in interestingly, uh, they have similar fertility measured in the number of uh, children that, that is, these individuals are having. So the conclusion is that uh, we identified and replicated a novel uh, population-specific protective variant. We confirmed in vivo and in vitro that this variant is uh, disrupting the splicing of IGF2. Uh, this variant, uh, this isoform is slowly expressed, but it's expressed in embryonic pancreatic islet precursors and in liver and in adipose tissue. Uh, so, non carriers of this variant, uh, in non carriers of this variant, isoform 2 expression is higher in type 2 diabetes and is also highly correlated with uh, HbA1c, which is a uh, marker for placing it. So, as I said, this, uh, this uh, represents that this isoform could be a promising target for uh, therapeutics for type 2 diabetes. And also, the genetic evidence supports that there are no major adverse effects. Uh, so this slide is uh, to try to acknowledge. So there are like around 70,000 authors. So this is a huge effort, consortium effort, and a lot of uh, a lot of people contributed to the analysis and help with uh, different kind of expertise. So this is the end of the first story. I don't know if you are interested in, if anyone has a question. <laughs>